want to share one more thing with y'all, right? Because I don't want to leave y'all by yourself, for yourself. I don't want to leave you desolate. I also want to give you an opportunity to come over and get a job. Listen, in the beginning of the show, I said, don't spare the ride because you're going to spoil the child. And I taught you how it is that you were supposed to prevent your children. Let me put this up because we already done with the children for the day. Prevent your children from being arrested and then making my license plates because they was over there looting stores over there in Philadelphia. And then I told you all about how it is that they was over there closing all of the Target stores, the Target stores, the Target stores, because y'all want to go over here and y'all want to ruin your own neighborhoods in protesting when it ain't even nothing to protest. Definitely going to be reading that Super Chat shortly. Shout out to Jod East. And then I helped y'all to understand how you couldn't get evicted because you was going to pay your bills on time. You know what I'm saying? And I even showed you how much taxes was being put into your EBT card as a result of all of these entertainers and high tax people and 1% of the population is paying more than 95% of the taxes. But I didn't want to leave you alone today. I didn't want to leave you alone today. What I wanted to do was make sure that you had an opportunity for employment. Because I understand that everybody deserves a second and third chance. I don't want to give you a fish. That's not what Jesus taught us to do. He told us to teach them how to fish. Don't just feed them. Teach them how to feed themselves so that they can be accountable. Is Carrie in here today? Where's Carrie at? Let me make sure that Carrie. What's going on with Carrie? I ain't seen her at all today. Y'all think that y'all just going to be getting away and y'all not going to be showing up to do what you're supposed to do at the front of the congregation. Where is Carrie? I haven't seen Carrie in here today. I certainly has not have not seen Carrie in here today. Is anybody anybody has Carrie been in the chat today? You know, you know, people don't want to answer the phone when they. Oh God! Where you? Where, I have not seen you in the chat today, Carrie. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on, Carrie? You busy? You busy? You are you that busy today? Carrie, literally about to log on. I'm literally Carrie, <laughs> how come every time somebody is late to work or they late to church, there's always somebody's funeral? Then it's the great aunt this time. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. My auntie, my great auntie. All right, send my condolences. We'll be here Thank for you. another 15, 20 minutes waiting on you. I want to see you in the chat. Okay, I'm, I'm tapping right now. All right, Carrie. Listen, I got to hold my chasers accountable. When I see my people missing, I got to check on them and see it was. I know my chasers phone numbers personally. I got them all lined up. I, uh, where has she been at? I know she usually late, but where has she been at today? You know what I'm saying? I need to know where my people at at all times. If you're not a part of the Patreon, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's go ahead and talk about these factories because we want to make sure that y'all get some jobs out here in these streets and not just keep on stealing. More than 19 million Americans held a job in manufacturing during the peak. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Carrie, you're going to have to rewatch the show. Hey, Carrie. In 1979. Since then, that number has tumbled by nearly 36% to just 12.5 million in November 2021. In comparison, non farm employees grew more than 65% during the same period. There are several reasons for this. One is that manufacturing steadily is becoming a more complex industry where you need more people with advanced degrees and professional certificates. Over the last 50 years, certain industries that just aren't really well suited for the U.S. economy, uh, particularly labor intensive, low wage manufacturing and things like textiles or furniture um, have moved offshore. But now the U.S. is spending big on industrial policies to bring manufacturers back to America. Industry now. If the United States of America, and I want y'all to put everything together, and this is one of the reasons why you want to tune in every single day. 
you want to be a part of the Millionaire Morning Show and you definitely want to be tuned into every single subject that I talk about. Let me tell you why. It's because everything is interconnected. Even if you don't see it now, it is definitely interconnected, right? The United States of America has largely, for a long time, for the majority of your lifetimes, the United States of America has largely been a financial industry. Meaning that we make our money off the interest or financing or continuing to do the least effective jobs as far as manufacturing, putting together things, building things. We don't build things in here anymore. Now we just try to sell things. We try to make money off interest. We try to trade. We try to do all of the things that don't require us to actually do anything physical, and we've outsourced that to other countries. But one of the reasons why countries outsource it is not just because Americans have gotten lazier, which we have, but also because it's just cheaper to do so. But Throughout the last 20, 30 years, we've reached a situation where jobs are not as plentiful. And even if you do get jobs, they don't necessarily pay as much as you want them to. And you also combine that with the fact that the amount that it costs to continue to manufacture all of these cars and everything else overseas is now reaching parity, is now growing, is now as other countries become more successful, as their workforce continue to grow, as they become more prosperous, the cost of doing business continues to go up. And so what do you do? They have to now incentivize companies and factories to come back to the United States of America, A, for political reasons, and then B, because they want to control what is going on as far as the distribution process and competition worldwide. Okay, well, Anton, what do you mean by that? I'll give you an example. Semiconductorship shortages, right? We've seen what happened in the pandemic. And also, semiconductor chips is largely the thing that powers the overwhelming majority of every single thing that we touch today. Even your cars, it has hundreds of chips in it. Your phones, your TVs, technology, every single thing you touch is semiconductor chips, especially when it comes to the drones and the military and all of that type of stuff, right? And so now that we're in a war with other countries and we want to continue to be ahead of them, especially as far as our technological advances, we're in a war with other countries that you not know you you don't even know about over in China. They're worried about China invading Taiwan in order to continue to source out their technology because the US now has a stronghold on how far advanced our semiconductor chips are and the technology that's being used in order to have them have themselves a, a leg up on the competition or other countries. If you're paying attention to the news and you understand how it comes back down to the money, for example. You understand that there was a man that defected away from ASML. ASML is the only company in the world that puts together and manufactures the machines that go inside of the plants that then make semiconductor chips. You should probably look into that. It's an investment opportunity. I am invested in ASML. I've been talking about it for years. And I, now it's coming full circle. And now you know why I invested in it. Because I'm intimately connected. Make sure you tap into the Patreon for the eight things that I look for when I'm looking to invest in a company. My point is this. They're now incentivizing manufacturing to come back to the United States of America because A, jobs, politics, B, we have to continue to control logistics, and then C, we now have a workforce that we're inputting. This last part is just my opinion. It's a theory. I can't substantiate it. We now have a workforce that we're putting together, especially with our open borders and the ability to give jobs to people that have already been approved for legal status and to be able to work here in the United States of America. Tesla is going to have over 60,000 new jobs in Texas, Giga Texas. They're making a new Model Y. It's the biggest selling car in the entire world as of the last quarter and growing. They just refreshed the Model 3. They got the Cybertruck coming. Every single large chip manufacturing are building chips all across the country, and they just passed the Chips Act last year. You wasn't paying attention to it. You didn't look at it. You didn't see what was happening. They passed the CHIPS Act, which all of the major chip companies lobbied for together in order to ensure that they have the finances and the resources to make it incentivized for them to continue to build plants here in the United States of America, which also allow for, allows for us to be able to control the distribution process, the manufacturing process. And we also need people to work in these plants. 
I'm sorry, I was supposed to let the video play. You know me, I get a little bit ahead of myself as far as what it is that I want to communicate to y'all. Policy. It is the use of some sort of government power, either legal power or taxing power or tax abating power or some other thing to have the economy start producing some things that the government thinks it needs to be producing and maybe isn't producing. If you look at the three pieces of legislation, the Chips and Science Act, uh, the the Chips and Science Act. A lot of you guys never read it because you were so busy focused on the Second Amendment and the Third Amendment and gun laws and abortion and all of this other type of stuff. You was never looking at what got passed through in the Chips Act. You don't even know where your tax dollars are going. It was a real thing and it was lobbied for by the major chip companies. And they received billions in tax incentives for them to build plants where they're going to be building plants in order to continue to boost the economy and also manufacturing here in the United States of America. Bipartisan infrastructure bill and the Inflation Reduction Act. You're looking at more than a trillion dollars. Now remember, it's more than a trillion dollars that's being incentivized to be spent here in the United States of America on behalf of you, the taxpayer. All of this was, all of this was passed during the Biden administration. In the minimal amount of time, see, listen, while y'all was being distracted and while Biden is over there on the picket lines today trying to drum up votes in order to get UAW endorsement, all of these things were passed during the Biden administration, over a trillion dollars in incentives. Now, where do you think all of that money is going? Somebody is getting a bag. Are you not paying attention? Are you not capitalized off of it? Are you not really understanding what a majority of the resources and your tax dollars are going, why they are incentivized to bring manufacturing back to the United States of America, why these budgets and these acts are passed as a result of it. No, you're not, you're not familiar with it. You don't even know what state is going to get what. You don't even know if your, your legislative branch, your local legislation, your governors are actually participating and lobbying for these jobs that's ultimately going to affect what it is your lifestyle is going to be new government spending on industrial policy. Not all economists believe the government should be playing favorites. Politicians and bureaucrats are ill-suited to pick winners in the market. If the federal government um, so puts its thumb on the scale on one side, the, the, there is inevitably going to be some sort of um, loser so how exactly is the U.S. government convincing manufacturers to return? And will its bet pay off? This isn't the first time the U.S. government has directly interfered with the I don't free want to know market. About this Industrial policy in the U.S. was started by Alexander Hamilton. He, he, the U.S. was weak in terms of making things, and we knew we had to be strong, had to make cannons and you know, muskets you know, and whatever. And so they put on heavy tariff walls that made it not economic to import things and therefore companies here started to make. But before we move over into this, this is a good point because every major revolution was basically manufactured. Before we move forward and before I show y'all a little bit more, I just want y'all to understand that every major, every major movement within the United States of America, especially when it comes to the financial incentives that came along with doing the thing that was in our best interest, the auto companies, right? The line, even slavery itself, all of it was actually put into place and manufactured. There was no real free enterprise and capitalization and market capitaliza capitalization based off of, right, innovation. Innovation was not the thing that created what it is that we wanted. It was all incentivized by the federal government. The factories, the lines, the fact that women were working in factories as a result of us going over in a war, all of that stuff was created for us. These were industries that were created by a federal government that also spurred innovation and growth within your society. If you ever want to do something for somebody, then incentivize them to do it for themselves. And then label market, free market, and, and capitalism and throw that on top of it to make them think that they actually did it for themselves. I don't want to speak too much on what's going on over in Ukraine, but I do know that I've, re I've read reports about how there are certain companies here in the U.S. that's also capitalizing off of rebuilding what's going on in Ukraine. There's a lot of profitability that came along with this war. We don't want to ask the questions that's pertinent. So let me move over a little bit. For somebody else, U.S. manufacturing credit. Okay. According to the Treasury Department. The EV battery you know, tax credit is $7.5 thousand dollars per new car 
and then a $4,000 credit when you sell the unit. Now think about that for a minute. When they give you tax credits, they're incentivizing you to spend money on something that you otherwise would not have. As much as people may not like EVs, oh, I like internal gas combustion engines, I like cars and all of this, other, I like the sound of it. It's coming, it doesn't matter. When the government starts to incentivize to do something that they want to do, it is going to happen. All they have to do is build the infrastructure for it. You know why we don't have self-driving cars? It's not that the technology is not there. Is that that we haven't incentivized ourselves to actually adopt it yet because we don't have the infrastructure to support it. It's not that we can't do it. It's that we're not interested in it yet. We've had electric cars for literally decades now. We've just started incentivizing people and they thought that it was their idea, but we incentivize people to do the thing that we want to go into technologically as far as the next vision for what America is supposed to be. And so what the federal government usually does is they incentivize you by giving you tax credits. If they want you to have children, then they're going to give you tax credits. If they want you to get married, they're going to incentivize you to get married. Because for whatever reason, they understand exactly what the agenda is. Y'all thought that y'all had y'all own mind, y'all not. Y'all just speaking talking points that was given to you. Used car to somebody else. U.S. manufacturing cost isn't that much higher than, than doing it in China, for example. And, and therefore... It would clearly be more profitable to do it here than it would be to ship it, make it there and ship it here. So the, the incentives have been huge. Meanwhile, the Chips and Science Act of 2022 set aside $50 billion to boost America's competitiveness in semiconductors. The Semiconductor Industry Association estimates that the act has attracted over $210 billion in private investments across- Which we, ha we can't even substantiate that yet because they haven't even built one chip here in America after the CHIPS Act is passed. But they're going to throw these numbers at you. Let's continue. It's 22 states. We make a fair amount of them, but we are highly reliant on a relatively small set of um, sources, uh, especially Taiwanese. One of the lessons that not only the government have drawn from COVID is that semiconductor sector is at the core of a lot of advanced manufacturing and even a lot of mid-level consumer goods manufacturing, and that we can't really afford an interruption of semiconductor supply. All major U.S. defense systems today rely on semiconductors in order to function. The Biden administration has referred to the reshoring of semiconductors as a matter of national security. There is a theoretical case for industrial policy, particularly it's a matter of national security, which means that they're going to pump more money into these companies than ever before. If I'm you, I'm trying to understand how the semiconductor chip industry, not only the chip companies, but every single company that's attached to it, the manufacturing, the selling, the moving, the logistics, every single part that's placed into it. If I'm you and I hear the government says that it's a matter of national security, that means that it's going to be money flying everywhere. If I'm you and I hear the government say this is a matter of national security, that we have to remain the, the chip leader for now into eternity, I'm looking at this as an opportunity and I'm starting to immediately do my research as to how it is that I can profit for this for the next 10 to 15 years. I've been telling you this literally for the last two and a half years. I've been having this conversation with y'all forever. You just now catching on? You just now came over into the Millionaire Morning Show? Your friends and family didn't send you over the show in order for you to catch on? I've been talking about this for years. See, this is not the sexy conversation. This is not the thing that you want to hear because it's almost like chastising you so you can do the thing that's in your own best interest. But it's here. Particularly in uh, national security related technologies. Free markets just simply can't uh, account for that national security issue. And the Defense Department is not a big enough buyer to in itself and its own demand to ensure that we have sufficient onshore supply. If successful, industrial policies up, can also potentially lead to what big up, payoffs. The development of space industry. We now have a large commercial space launch industry. That investment of public money in space science uh, is now having a big commercial payoff. Another example would be the development of mRNA vaccines for COVID. They put out a goal for business to do and they financed it and the businesses delivered on it. 
and you know, that cost a lot of money, but I think most people would say it was well worth it. But there are also strong cases against them. Politicians and bureaucrats are um, ill-suited to pick winners in the market. The real economy is insanely complex, involving millions of people and millions of transactions every single day. What is um, potentially strategic today might change dramatically tomorrow. We so basically what he's telling you is that all the federal government can do is incentivize the industry and they can influence the industry, but it's up to the manufacturers, it's up to you as consumers, and it's up to the marketers and the people that are going to make money or stand to benefit from this to actually implement the things that we see happening in the world today. The reason why the United States of America is bringing manufacturing back to the United States of America is not necessarily because we're financially incentivized to do so is that we don't have any choice in order to maintain control, in order to compete against other countries, in order to maintain political power, and then we also have to create a workforce that will actually work in these companies and in these factories that are smart enough, that are wise enough, and that are also, they have the level of endurance in order to be there long enough to actually put together this thing because you're always, always going to be incentivized to do the thing that's not in your best interest if you're not informed versus actually just doing stuff because you think that you came up with the idea on your own. No idea is original. Everything is incentivized. 